Have you ever experienced something so awesome or groundbreaking that you just had to tell people? Not long ago, my two-month-old son, Carmen, slept through the whole night for the very first time. As first-time parents, my husband and I were so excited about it, both because it meant that we, too, were able to get good sleep, but also because of what it meant for Carmen's development. And we could not stop sharing this news to any and everyone who would listen. One thing people always ask about and want to know from new parents is just how much sleep we're working with. And after he slept through the whole night, we were beyond excited to share the news. I'm sure you can think of a piece of news or information that you, like me, were happy to share with those around you. But when I think about it, I find it interesting that as followers of Jesus, we have access to the best news there is, the answer to the questions people are actually asking, which is found only in the good news of the gospel. But so often, we're either too scared or simply don't know how to share it effectively with the people around us. Before we can talk about sharing the gospel, which is known as evangelism, it's important that we all begin with an understanding of what it means when we talk about the gospel to begin with. If you would like a refresher or to hear with more clarity what the gospel is, Pastor Jeff made a video that we'll link to in the description below. I encourage you to check it out if you're seeking clear language around what it means when we use the words gospel or good news. It often feels like simply knowing the gospel in a general sense isn't going to help us effectively tell others about it. Effective evangelism comes from a deeper place of knowing the gospel for ourselves, realizing the personal effects that the gospel has had on our own lives. Thus, answering two questions can prepare us to share the gospel with confidence and effectiveness. One, why is the gospel good news? And two, how has this good news changed you personally? When we have answers to these two questions, we have a wonderful starting point to share our faith with others effectively. So first, why is the gospel called good news in the first place? The word gospel comes from the Greek word euangelion, which literally means good news. The gospel message is good news because it offers a solution to the problem of sin and separation from God. It is a message of hope, love, and redemption offered to all people. It is the story of God's love for humanity and his plan to rescue us from sin and death through his son, Jesus Christ. Sometimes as followers of Jesus, we've heard the gospel message so many times that we can hear it and go, yeah, the gospel, yada, yada, as if the story is boring or empty. But the message of the gospel is anything but boring or empty. This message is the only one that can offer real hope and a new life to all who accept it. It provides a way for people to be reconciled to God and experience the love, grace, and peace that comes from a relationship with the creator of not only the universe as a whole, but the creator of ourselves as individuals. We get to be ambassadors of hope for the hopeless and peace for the anxious, not by our own works, but through faith in the one who came to offer it. When we keep that perspective in mind, it should give us a renewed passion to share that gift with others and a jumping off point when we go about doing so. Secondly, we need to understand how the message of the gospel has impacted our own lives and be willing to offer a piece of our own story. Sharing your testimony can be an effective way to bring others to know Jesus because it's a personal and relatable way to share the gospel message. When you share how Jesus has transformed your life, it can inspire others to seek him for themselves. Mark 5, for example, tells a story of a man who had been demon-possessed and tells how Jesus healed him. After the man was healed, Jesus told him this, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. The man went and shared his testimony and many people believed in Jesus because of it. But what if Jesus is telling each of us the same thing? Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. This is an invitation for us to get to use our own stories to help others get to know our friend and Savior Jesus. This shows me that I don't need to have the answers to every question someone might have. I don't need to have every story from scripture memorized. I simply need to be obedient to share my own experience of God and how it's transformed me. Last year during our 23 Days with God series, I shared about how a recent miscarriage was actually multiplying the depth of my faith. I shared about how the hope I was holding on to and how that was rooted about in my trust of who God is. I opened up about the ways that God was revealing himself to me while I was still in the middle of some of the worst days, before there could possibly be a pretty hallmark ending to that story. 
In the following weeks and months, I saw so clearly that my willingness to share even just that small piece of my story and how God was moving in my life amidst a really complex and painful situation, He opened the door to really beautiful and fruitful conversations about faith and dependence on Him amongst women that had walked the same painful path. When we allow others an inside look into how our stories have intersected with the love and saving grace of Jesus, we invite them into the relationship God desires to have with them through the work Jesus did on the cross. Our role as followers of Jesus is not to change hearts. Only God knows when and how he will draw people to know and put their faith in him. Our role is simply to be obedient to testify about his love and grace toward us and invite others in to receive that. So today, as a spiritual practice, I encourage you to spend five minutes praying for two or three individuals who don't yet know about the love and grace Jesus has for them. Take time to ask God for the boldness and opportunity to share your story with them.